Um, Dr. Steve Miles is Professor of Medicine and Moss Family Chair of Bioethics at the University of Minnesota Medical School. He's also an affiliate faculty law school concentration in health law and bioethics. He has published four books, more than 20 chapters, and about 200 articles on medical ethics, human rights, tropical medicine, end of life care, and geriatric care. Dr. Steve Miles recently launched a website, doctorswhotorture.com, in early July 2013. Can you tell me a little bit about why you decided to create this website? Well, it's pretty amazing. If you take maybe half the countries in the world, torture people, and of the torture survivors, more than half report seeing a doctor supervising their torture. And that doesn't count the people who never see a doctor who falsifies a death certificate saying they died of a heart attack instead of being tortured. So when you think about it, there are far more doctors involved in the process of torturing prisoners than there are doctors treating torture survivors. There's been a huge change in the international human rights movement over the last 30 years to begin prosecuting people who commit war crimes, like General Pinochet of, of Chile. One of the things people don't realize is that this now includes doctors as well. The purpose of the website is to assist the process of holding doctors accountable for torture, to give resources for that, to show cases where it's been done, to show where it needs to be done, and to join the part of the human rights, international human rights movement that is involved in holding people accountable for war crimes. Doctors assist in torture around the world in uh, developed countries and in uh, undeveloped countries or developing countries. Uh, they do three things. First off, they design methods of torture that don't leave scars, like waterboarding, for example or use of very small electrical wires to administer shocks. Uh, second, uh, what they do is they keep people alive who are not supposed to die during torture by adjusting the torture up and down according to what they can tolerate. And the third thing they do is for people who die of torture or who are maimed by torture, they falsify the medical records and death certificates to hide the fact that torture occurred. Mm -hmm. uh, the United States, um, Unfortunately, in the war on terror, brought doctors into the process of abusive interrogations that the United Nations and the International Committee of the Red Cross correctly classify as torture. Uh, indeed, the kinds of things that U.S. physicians are now doing um, are the kinds of acts that we have prosecuted as torture in other countries. Since 1975, when Greece court-martialed a doctor for torture, we've seen this steady increase in the number of countries who are prosecuting doctors for torture. Some countries, like Brazil, for example, have a system for handling these cases in mass. Uh, other countries are, are only punishing symbolic physicians, um, for example, South Africa or uh, the United Kingdom. Uh, and other countries, uh, for example, uh, Germany had a large number of torture doctors when it, uh, it was part of the, uh, during the Cold War, and I exclude the Nazi period. Uh, and they have not punished any of the doctors who ran the uh, East German uh, torture prisons. This is six years of, uh, of research. Um, it's very hard to do because what one does is search the word torture and doctor in various languages see what comes up um, in news sources or articles, and then um, Google translates it, see if the thing is relevant, then give it to a native speaker to make sure the Google Translate is right. And then what I do is I post the original language document as documentation of the claim. Well, in the first two weeks of operation, it started about the 4th of July, we had 10,000 pages downloaded from about 50 countries, which uh, considering there was no advertising, it was pretty good. And I know that the links are rapidly spreading because um, I'm getting emails all the time, so it's working. When I look at my professional colleagues in other countries, they take horrendous risks. Um, if we in the United States can't speak on these matters, nobody in the world can. Uh, the same goes for journalists. Uh, there are countries where our conversation would result in both of us being disappeared. And um, no, I'm not nervous about it. 
fact, I think it's an obligation on the part of the United States to stand for human rights, and it's tragic that we have abandoned that voice. Torture actually is now less common uh, than it was uh, at any point in human history. Um, so we are making progress. Uh, one of the issues here is to drive a wedge between the doctors and uh, the governments. Uh, the governments need to have doctors in their prisons. To the extent that these doctors can be made aware of their duty, that they are in fact human rights monitors in prisons, uh, we create extra eyes in prisons which decrease the level of abuse. Uh, and so it's my intent to create as many eyes as possible. The United States is currently violating international law with regard to uh, force feeding of inmates. Um, you know, under Reagan, the United States passed the Convention Against Torture with one definition of torture. And we stated in doing that that separate national definitions would not be accepted. For example, a number of the Arab states wanted to have Sharia law as an exception to the international law definition of torture. And now we want to be an exception to the international law. And there has to be one law on torture. And all countries have to be accountable to it. And that means at some point, um, uh, if uh, Dick Cheney or Rumsfeld or Condoleezza Rice are indicted for war crimes, uh, that's fine. Uh, in fact, we have several of our CIA agents who are currently under indictment for war crimes. That's how the system of international law works. We all saw these pictures of torture from Abu Ghraib. And the question that came to mind when I saw these pictures was where were the doctors? Why didn't they blow the whistle on this? They must have seen it. Or certainly they saw the signs of this kind of injury. Why didn't they blow the whistle? And so my first project was to attempt to compile all the documents to understand how the military had suppressed the doctor's protests. And what I found instead was that the U.S. doctors had actually been built into the process of abuse. You know, I, I, I'm an optimist because I think that I think that the movement against torture is, is basically a civil rights movement. And civil rights movements play out over generations. Uh, they're not the kind of thing that lead, lend themselves to an overnight change. And I think that while we're currently involved in a setback with regard to the United States, around the world the incidence of torture is falling. And I, I honestly believe that uh, you know, a hundred years from now, we will have a fraction of the torture that we now have.